Hey guys, Quiv the Lazy Geek here and welcome back to the channel. Today we're gonna do some more astro imaging from my usual balcony with my usual equipment, which uh, by the way is now reduced to only this, what you see on the screen really uh, effectively. Uh, and I'll go on to the reasons of that in a different video. But for tonight, we're supposed to be getting a good night and I want to keep going with my like one night, one target kind of uh, thing that I've been doing since that uh, California Nebula stuff. And I was thinking like, okay, the moon is half full, so it's kind of not great, but, but usable, let's say. And I've been thinking about just um, still with my uh, l -Extreme filter in there. It could be the IDAS NBZ, but I'm too lazy to take another set of flats. Uh, but still with my l -Extreme filter, I'm just going to take uh, a photo of the Heart Nebula, because I think the Heart Nebula is a great uh, target. I haven't done it in a while, I think, or if I have, I don't really care. And I just want to see like, okay, what happens when I get uh, one night of data with on the Heart Nebula with the L-Extreme filter on my Hyperstar setup, which is overall like a very, well, not very, but it is, let's say an accessible setup uh, for astrophotography in general. Like it doesn't have to be the SEM60 mount that I have here. It can be the EQ6R, it can be an HEQ5 kind of mount. You pair it with, that uh, little Hyperstar C6, so a C6 telescope from uh, Celestron and then a Hyperstar module from Starizona. As a reminder, I got the Hyperstar module in here for free, but I am not sponsored by anyone. And uh, in there, I also have uh, my blue color rising cam with the 571 uh, color sensor uh, that is in this, that, that's the same as the 2600 MC uh, camera from uh, ZW and just for the heck of it I am going to be using uh, showing you like my use of Nina for this particular target simply like from scratch I just started up Nina just to, rem to remind people how Nina is an awesome piece of software it's free it's open source I worked on it in the past a, a lot of my work has actually not been replaced by really awesome uh, autofocus plugins but I don't mind, it's really good, and that's like the spirit of open source software. Anyway, I'm in Nina right now. How am I going to tell my computer to, uh, to take a picture of the Heart Nebula? So my computer is actually, there's a little box on top of the telescope here. That is the actual computer. I'm connecting via Chrome remote desktop to the little, teles uh, to the little computer on the telescope here. The little computer on the telescope takes uh, 12 volt in input, just like the rest of the equipment there. And it's connected via USB to the camera, via a USB to RS-232 adapter to the mount. And it is uh, connected to the focuser via USB. And I think that's pretty much it. There's also a little guide scope on the other side with a QHY uh, camera that's uh, connected to the computer by USB as well. With that, we can go inside uh, Nina and uh, it's already like recognized the camera. So I'm just going to connect to the camera. And while I'm at it, I'm going to tell it to cool down to minus 10 degrees. And the dew heater for this camera, because the camera does have a dew heater, is already on. While this is ongoing, I'll go to the filter wheel. I have a manual filter wheel, wheel set up here. And this is simply for me to uh, be able to apply flat frames correctly to my light frames. So this manual filter doesn't do anything. I don't have a filter wheel, I have a filter drawer, drawer. but I can tell Nina and Nina will put that information in the uh, image file that it saves that, okay, I'm using the L-Extreme filter. And that means that when in PixInsight, I put in my L-Extreme flats for, uh, for this filter, um, the, uh, the PixInsight, the weighted batch pre-processing script will be able to associate the light frames to the proper flat frames. So that's the, the advantage of that. I will also connect to uh, the uh, focuser and uh, the telescope is the actual mount. Uh, so I'm going to connect to the uh, ioptron mount. So this is all like from the menu select. And obviously for all of this to work, you need to have um, for the filter wheel, for the focuser, I mean the filter wheel, I, I don't have one. So just for the focuser, and for the telescope, as well as for the guider, you need to have like the uh, ASCOM drivers installed. Anyway, you can see that when I connected the mount, this little ioptron commander thing came up. If you are using a Skywatcher mount like the EQ6R, I would highly recommend a Green Swamp server to control that mount. Uh, and uh, you would get the Green Swamp server window there. 
uh, for me I have Tron, I show the uh, mount panel and the thing that I want to do first before I do anything else is make sure that the mount can move because very often it cannot and you can see here the mount isn't doing anything even though it's supposed to do so uh, because it's parked okay I'm gonna unpark it and let's try again okay it's moving that's good I'm just gonna uh, put it back to zero position the reason that I do that is that even sometimes even with the mount unparked it refuses to move at first and I need to close the driver and reopen it for it to work so something to keep in mind if you have an older ioptron mount I don't think that would be the case with like the SAM 70 for instance anyway the next step is the guider and I like to do that all manually you can uh, you can have Nina connect to all of the equipment at once but I don't do that I prefer to just like take it gradually uh, one by one that way we're we're sure everything's working so I opened up PHD 2 which is what I'm using for guiding another uh, free software and I already have my uh, QHY camera set up I'm not going to go through the the initial setup of uh, of PHD 2 but we'll also connect it to the mount and with that uh, PHD 2 I'm just gonna make sure that the guide camera does uh, is able to take images and yes it is uh, returning an image and so back to Nina I can just tell Nina to connect to uh, PHD2 again I could have like just connected to the PHD2 from Nina directly Nina would have automatically started up PHD2 with the right profile etc etc but I I'm old school I prefer to do things manually to make sure that everything's work now in the sky atlas I'm just going to search for our heart uh, it's probably not in the atlas so what I'll do is it 1805 is it IC 1805 uh, yes I think that's the right one so uh, you can see that I've set up um, and I think I've shown how to do that in another video if not uh, you have videos from uh, Patriot Astro for instance that show how to do this but I've set up <laughs> a horizon based on uh, my roof that's there and the uh, the surrounding like cityscape to tell Nina where my actual horizon is and you can see that the heart nebula is actually already over my horizon uh, which is good but I'll show you how in the Nina assistant or the Nina sequencer I can tell Nina to wait for the target to be a certain number of degrees above my horizon which is super useful anyway I'm gonna put that set it for the uh, framing assistant and one of the things is I believe my camera is actually rotated 90 degrees compared to this so there is uh, likely my um, my field of view which on the heart nebula this looks perfectly good this is exactly what I need I'm not gonna slew to it I am just going to tell uh, Nina to add the target to the sequence so I'm gonna add to target list and you can see I have a list of templates that are available so in the sequencer and I showed that in a previous video a long time ago otherwise I highly recommend Patriot's Patriot Astro's channel to go through that in detail about the uh, the sequencer but I have my own sequence templates for my targets with my predetermined parameters so I'm just going to use that and this will uh, put the uh, the target in the sequencer and there we are we've added the target to the sequence now this is where I go to my templates there and I'm gonna put like the basic sequence startup this is great for in case I have forgotten stuff like to cool the camera or to unpark the scope I've done that manually you saw me do it manually but in case I had forgotten always good to have that and at the very end I'm also going to put my own templates so user templates basic sequence end and what this does is it will um, send me a notification to my phone via pushover it will warm the camera and it will also park the scope and then it will actually disconnect the camera this is to make sure that the camera the cooler is actually off and that the fan of the camera is actually off this is basically me being my usual paranoid self and <laughs> me being paranoid is why so many poor users of the 533 MC Pro are confused about whether to use uh, gain one, 100 or 101 doesn't really matter <laughs> sorry about that anyway um, going back to the um, to the main sequence 
here we are and you can see that I have like um, I'll get a, a, a notification to my phone when stuff starts um, uh, going on and also I have set up failures to push over so send to my phone um, in case of an error the first step will be to slew and center, run the autofocus, start the guiding, and a very interesting one is you can force calibration. If you've moved your telescope since the last time you used it, you can instead of like manually pointing the telescope somewhere and uh, and you know basically forcing calibration in PhD two, you can do it from here directly in Nina. And then within the actual target imaging instruction, we have a meridian flip. Okay, so Nina will do the meridian flip automatically we have an autofocus after HFR increase an autofocus after filter change although like for me it's not gonna happen we have um, restore guiding uh, just like in case and center after drift which means that every two exposures in this case if my target has moved in the field of view by more than 10 arc minutes Nina will automatically play and uh, basically move the mount to recenter the target, which is awesome, especially if you're like not exactly correctly polar aligned. And then we have um, the exposures themselves. And for the exposures, you can see that I have loop conditions. I have loop while the target, the next target is below altitude. I'm gonna remove them because I don't have a next target. We're gonna use a single um, uh, target. So what I'm gonna do is go to the instructions and say loop until time. And I'm just going to tell it that I want to loop until the astronomical dawn. Nothing else to do. How awesome is this? Nina is such an incredible piece of software, guys. Anyway, uh, you can see that I will cool the camera to minus 10. I have it in each step. This is a just-in-case kind of thing. And uh, I also have a take exposure of 300 seconds. So in Tokyo, my exposures can be much shorter, even with the L-Extreme. But I simply like to have fewer <laughs> exposures to stack in the end. It, it is just faster to stack and easier, especially if you're doing stuff like local normalization in PixInsight. Uh, and then I have dither after exposures. Here I have it every three exposures. But I think with five minute exposures, I could actually do it every single exposure. But I'll just put it to exposure to uh, lose as little time as possible. And then what I would normally do, and actually I'll do it as well just so you have it, is that I am going to uh, search for, I think, weight. Yes. And we can say wait for uh, altitude or wait until above horizon. There it is. So I could say, you know, before you actually start on the target, I'm going to add this here and say we're going to wait before we start until uh, we are above the horizon plus two degrees or maybe five degrees for instance so if i say like i want to start once i'm i have my tar I, my target at least five degrees above my horizon you can see that it wants the altitude based on my artificial horizon set up in nina here to be uh 49.53 uh no 49.31 degrees and we're already above that right so if i click the play button Nina will start doing things immediately, which because I have my light on and stuff, I don't want to do. So, uh, and this is it for my setup. I have nothing else to do. You can see very quickly, I have Nina already to image for this, in this particular case, on a single target across the night. And hopefully, just like last time, everything will go smoothly. If something doesn't go smoothly, pushover will just send me a notification to my phone so I can take action. It's as simple as that. I can't praise Nina enough. It's it's an amazing, amazing piece of software. Uh, by the way, quick word about the autofocus. By default, uh, the autofocus uses uh, Nina's internal autofocus engine, which is something that I worked on intensely when I was um, contributing to Nina. But if you go inside uh, the options in, um, in imaging, so in the options in imaging, you can see you have like the star detector, star annotator, and autofocus. And uh, here, like by default, it's gonna be Nina. But if you go inside the plugins and you install the, the plugin called uh, Hocus Focus, you can set up Nina within the imaging, imaging time to tab to use Hocus Focus instead of the uh, internal Nina focuser, which is what I was working on a lot. And in my experience, Hocus Focus is just far superior to what I <laughs> to what I worked on. So I have to admit that. Awesome job.
uh, from the developer of that uh, of that plugin and I highly recommend using it but anyway that's it to set up the sequence if you have a go-to mount and a focuser and uh, an auto guide scope it's paradise guys it's absolute paradise and uh, and with Nina it's really everything works really well and yes there are things like the SI Air which I uh, reviewed on this channel I think the SI Air is a great uh, product but Nina is just far more flexible and Nina can connect to uh, equipment that the SI Air cannot the SI Air closes you in on ZW equipment uh, at least for the camera uh, whereas for me I have a Ryzen cam and I have a QHY guide camera so I cannot use the SI Air which you know is a bit of a shame uh, anyway, that's it. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go inside, click on the play button, and uh, and uh, tomorrow I'm going to go flying. So probably the day after tomorrow, I'll be uh, doing the processing and we'll look at how well it worked. So with that, see you then. And we are the following day. So I didn't look at anything in the morning I, because I went far away to fly. Uh, but I'm now back and uh, one thing that caught my eye actually in the, in the morning when I woke up was that I got a lot of notifications from my phone on my phone about stuff that didn't go well like PhD2 losing uh, guide star uh, that kind of stuff and this is exactly why being able to recenter the target as the advanced sequencer in Nina can do is very important because sometimes when PHE2 loses the guide star it might lock into a cloud or some pixel or whatever and then you go completely off target. At any rate um, I got a lot of warnings and so now I need to investigate what was wrong with those uh, warnings. Okay so I'm now connected to uh, my computer on the rooftop that's connected to my telescope and uh, we can see immediately we have tons of PHD2 uh, warnings here and um, what's very interesting is the curve that you see here this HFR history curve it's my go-to diagnostics curve um, because typically in a light polluted area like Tokyo uh, the yellow curve that we have in here is the number of stars detected in the image I normally expect it to go like to be a nice curve like that the reason being that it's the number of stars and the lower I'm towards the horizon the more fog or the more city lights I need to image through and so obviously that means there will be fewer stars detected and when the target reaches the zenith then I expect to see the most stars later on in the weighted batch pre-processing script in PixInsight I'll attribute more weight to the pictures with more stars than the rest and this is something that I've de detailed in some of my um, <coughs> other uh, videos before. Now what I see here as you can see on the right hand side like at around 80 frames I have a huge dip. I also have some dips here on the left and here as well so it's likely high level clouds, smogginess, whatever uh, that affected that but I can see like towards the morning like it suddenly takes a, a, a very big dip and I know that basically all of the frames there are garbage and so I can basically safely delete all of the frames that are after the first frame where it dropped which is frame number 81 so something 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 000, uh, 0081 that fits so that's from there I can delete the uh, the images I don't even need to check them in PixInsight or whatever I know they're wrong, I know they're bad, I'm just gonna get rid of them. Now also we can see that you know we have PhD2 warnings. If I open up PhD2, yeah, as expected, we see the last image was uh, through clouds. It didn't work uh, very, very well, obviously. So uh, I'm gonna close all of the notifications about PhD2. There were a ton of those. I'm also going to close uh, PhD2. And uh, now that I know that I need to remove, basically to delete my frames uh, post 81 included, I can close Nina as well. I mean, I have some weird stuff going on there, but it's, it's fine. And my next step is to go into my lights folder. And as I said, like, I don't even need to check. I can look at my images taken like overnight and 81, there it is. There's my uh, set. So from 81 to 91, they're gone so I lose like 50 minutes of uh, imaging uh, 
not a big deal actually 55 minutes so almost an hour of imaging I'm just going to delete those goodbye I don't even check them out uh, so uh, what I'll do next is I'll need to stack all of those frames uh, and do the processing now I expect to be doing the exact same processing as I did for the California Nebula in my previous video so if you're interested have a look at that uh, what I'll do is that I'll do it off camera until uh, and then I'll show you the end result and here's the final result bah! Uh, yeah no I mean it's like it, it this feels like cheating this is pure magic uh, so this is a single night of imaging from Tokyo um, yeah I don't know if I need to add anything this is uh, pretty cool and the, uh, the the processing itself is like 10 minutes uh, so it's not perfect I could do better but I'm just too lazy this is this is good this is really good it's like come on single night imaging on the heart nebula with L extreme and hyperstar there it is there it is so yeah it's like astrophotography really has come a long way since the uh, the good old days when like sequence generator generator pro was like basically the only solution available for us amateurs uh, in the market um, it's like Nina has really transformed the way I do astrophotography and then like those uh, scripts available from Bill Blanchon and uh, and from uh, I forgot his name but like noise exterminator and star exterminator they're amazing uh, absolutely amazing by the way uh, for the uh, star exterminator script um, our process actually uh, as per recommendations from a lot of viewers on my last video when I removed the stars I made sure to check this unscreen stars here and then when I place them back uh, you can see like there's this pop-up and towards the bottom there is like the tilde tilde starless times tilde stars so I use this formula instead and it's true like when it blended the stars back in it actually looked uh, much better than what I did last time which was just like target plus star image uh, so just uh, that's basically the only thing that I changed in the uh, processing workflow compared to my last video I'm like yeah again one night in Tokyo Bordel 8 probably uh, 8 to 9 uh, probably closer to 8 than 9 where I am at but uh, pfft, yeah there it is again feels like cheating and I feel like um, I really don't need to image in monochrome <laughs> because then I don't need to change filters especially with hyperstar I cannot automate the filter change there you go uh, so yeah so that's like another one night one target uh, kind of stuff I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope that as always you learned something and if you did learn something and you're new to the channel welcome to the channel you may want to like subscribe blah 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 all of that good stuff but yeah thanks a lot for watching um, don't forget whenever you can to look up at the stars and I'll see you next time